it, it, it's interesting that, uh, uh, that, that, that the whole uh, debate about uh, uh, the future of Scotland is now getting much more international attention, uh, uh, particularly Spain, but I think uh, in the States, perhaps more on defence issues and the implications there, the Canadians as well. And I think that's appropriate, because uh, if Scotland does secede, uh, then in effect the world's uh, oldest democratic multinational state uh, would have dissolved. There are all sorts of issues then about uh, uh, what type of structures would succeed them, and, and I, I'm sure there would be structures of a uh, confederal sort that would keep a lot of Britishness going, and there would be cooperation. But it would send a signal, I think, to the world uh, that uh, perhaps wasn't sent when Yugoslavia or even the Soviet Union dissolved. And uh, I think it's appropriate to put this debate in that context. It affects options that unionists would develop, and it also affects, I think, uh, uh, the, the options that nationalists are looking at. Uh, it is not just the people of Scotland's decision. They will uh, determine what happens to Britain. We need a voice in that. But the, the whole British people in conducting themselves on this big constitutional issue in the next year uh, will have a big impact on worldwide uh, constitutionalism. Um, this, this is going to be the biggest decision since 1998 when uh, uh, the um, High Court of uh, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled on uh, the, the principle of secession and basically said there wasn't a, uh, a right to secede, uh, but uh, that, that there was a presumption to negotiate if uh, the people of Quebec voted for uh, independence. Um, and uh, uh, we obviously would have taken things on uh, quite considerably if uh, we do see Scotland uh, leave. Uh, the Union. And I think uh, as far as the whole concept of unionism, it will be the biggest event if that happens, probably since the American Civil War, in which the very term unionism was coined incidentally. Um, and I think this sense of unionism, it's, uh, you, know, you know, perhaps some of you will feel I've started off in uh, quite a high-handed way that uh, puts the nationalist case in uh, uh, a poor light, but uh, I, I, I don't at all. I think it's a, it's a coherent option. Uh, and, and a perfectly uh, permissible one and a liberal one, if I can put it that way. But I think the consequences need to be thought about. But for unionists, uh, I, I think to have a unionism that is insular to Britain causes its own difficulties. Uh, European unionism, I think, is, is something that uh, has to be taken very seriously. And how you have one without the other, well, I think you need to present an argument to, to, to show that that's uh, coherent. And the unionists clearly have to uh, consider develop a constitution and looking at some issues uh, if we really want to keep the union together and it is uh, not going to survive on sufferance it's not going to survive there uh, 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 if if the English really don't want to pay the price for a union just as the people of Scotland and Wales pay a price in not having uh, independence um, finally um, Britain clearly is at the moment a quasi federal state but we have federalism without the rule book. That's how I would describe it. And it occurs to me that uh, one way out of uh, our present uh, difficulties, if you're a unionist, is to have a fuller, uh, well-thought-out form of federalism for the British uh, 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 to, to match and, and meet the needs of British political experience, but to have a, a rule book. And we can talk about how we may you know, get there, but to, to say we need a more <coughs> formal federal uh, 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 settlement that recognises the sovereign authority uh, of, uh, of Wales, Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and also of the UK state, and uh, to look at our other institutions uh, in, in those terms as well, particularly, for instance, the House of Lords, but there are issues about how England is governed in terms of domestic uh, matters and uh, uh, how the UK government would, would survive as a powerful and authoritative government with other sovereign governments around it. And I think those are very, very complex uh, issues that need to be thought through thoroughly, but I do think there's a clear answer, and this is what I will conclude on. Um, the union of uh, Great Britain and Ireland, which was a pretty forced and unsatisfactory union, but it probably would have survived nevertheless if home rule all round had been implemented, or at least home rule for Ireland in the first uh, uh, instance. Uh, and it was prevented by unionists, and particularly conservative unionists, the, the tradition I now represent today, uh, or have succeeded to, uh, and that history has to be considered uh, 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 very extensively. 
And uh, when the game was nearly up in 1918, when uh, Sinn Féin swept aside the Irish Nationalist Party, this polite force that had been saying, look, we win 90% of the seats in Ireland, we need home rule, give us home rule, we'll stay within Britain. Well, you know, the British state just never uh, uh, could deliver that. Um, and then when Sinn Féin had this vast victory in 1918, the Unionists suddenly uh, realised that uh, unless something very dramatic happened, we would lose Ireland. And what did they produce? They produced, produced federalism of a particularly coherent kind, actually, through the Speaker's Conference. There were two uh, 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 models. And the, 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 one of them was, was a, a, a classic form of federalism in, in, in all but name. But they waited to the very last moment when it was far too late. It was probably a generation too late then uh, to save the Union. And I just think if the people of Scotland vote uh, uh, yes to independence next year, but that happens because a lot of the middle ground in Scotland not really wanting independence as a first option, but are so unsatisfied with the current status quo that they end up voting for independence because a coherent alternative in some form of federalism is not offered to them. And I hope that unionists this time don't miss the bus. I hope I've not gone on too long. Peter. Thank you, David. That's, that's very helpful to... to to set the, the terms of the debate. Adam. Uh, well, I think um, I'm going to be very nice about David. That, that's probably going to do no good to either of our other political <laughs> reputations, but there we are. Um, seeing as you, you, were, you were nice in, in uh, you were kind in passing about me in, uh, in the part of the book, um, I, I think it's a very uh, important, timely contribution. I mean, I, I think. Uh, we need better unionists, I mean, and I say that as a nationalist. Wales needs better unionists. We, we all need to raise our game, I think, in politics in Wales, and that's true of nationalism as well. But, uh, so I, I, I welcome this contribution. I, mean, I previously described David as, as the Voltaire of Wales, you know, rather, <laughs> rather grandly, as I want to do, uh, Leighton. Um, but I, I think... Um, we'll finish me off. I think that uh, what he's avoided, actually, is... What, you know, the, the more Panglossian versions of unionism, that this is the best of all possible states, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, which I, I don't think even the most hardline unionists in the room would, would, would necessarily agree with. Dismal unionism, you call it, and, and, and uh, uh, your, your vision of an exhilarating unionism, I mean, left me a little bit cold, I must admit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, as agnostic uh, about that as I am in church, but... Uh, I think it's a good a, a good effort uh, to to try and, and, and create a different vision of what the, of what the Britain could be because you know when we, we talk about the national question we often get stuck about, about who we are but actually the real question is what do we want to be you know what is Wales for and what what is Britain for I think are the more interesting questions uh, uh, and um, because everything else is pure subjectivity. You know, we can have an interesting dialogue about, the, about that question, about who we, uh, uh, what kind of society we want to be. Um, I think that, I mean, the, where I, I do agree with him, I mean, you know, David is a bit like, uh, as Gwyneth Williams once said, a son as Lewis, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure disagreeing with him. But uh, I do agree with him uh, on, uh, on this central question. You know, the Scottish question is a question for all of us, as Peter said as well. And, you know, the way in which this debate, you know, we, we, Wales and Northern Ireland have been gently airbrushed out of the picture, you know, it, it's a kind of an Anglo-Scottish dialogue, I think, uh, is, is very, very dangerous and, and, and unacceptable, because there will be consequences of a yes or a no vote for all of us uh, within this, uh, this uh, supposedly united kingdom. Uh, so I think that that's very, very important. I mean, it's, it sometimes feel, I, mean, I, I think sometimes the sloganizing of better together, which, you know, they kind of lapse into this rather, rather hackneyed kind of divorce kind of analogy uh, sometimes. Well, if it's a divorce, you know, there are four people in this marriage and not even the most liberal Cameroon, I think, would be in favor of that, you know. So uh, presumably then we're, 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 what are we, we're the children, the hapless children upstairs, you know, kind of cowering as the, the constitutional crockery of state is, is smashed to smithereens. Well, that's not acceptable, is it, you know? It reminds me a little bit of the... Uh, the, 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 home, uh, the home championships, you know, when, uh, after a hundred years of solid service to the Union uh, was dispatched with unceremoniously because the English lost interest and the, the Scottish uh, followed suit. And if I remember rightly, with great irony, of course, it was the Northern Irish that won that year and Wales came second. And uh, it's still up there, presumably, in the Irish FA in Belfast. So I think that we need a referendum all round. We all need to, to, to ask, uh, maybe the question might, might, might be different. 
Um, certainly the answers, uh, I, 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 I hope, uh, will be different. But we all, I think, need to engage in a dialogue about where, uh, uh, about where we want to be. Uh, the English need to have a debate. I mean, you know, th this uh, English patriotism is the love that dare not speak its name, it's, it seems to me. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the, 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 the last days of the, uh, dare I say, the Habsburg Empire, when they, they conjured up this, because this, um, they couldn't use the word Austria. Austria wasn't used as a term officially until 1915, a bit late in the day, I suggest, you know. So they, they created this Ruritanian term for the German-speaking parts of Austria-Hungary, Cisleithania. Uh, hasn't really left its mark on history, but I think the English are somewhere in that Cisleithanian realm, you know. They haven't e even begun to ask uh, the national question, certainly not in the same uh, depth. Uh, and rigor that uh, um, you know, David's book uh, attests to the degree with which we've asked it in Wales. I remain an ethical nationalist. Uh, that is, I believe that no country <coughs> ever ruled another well. And we, and I, you know, we can have. A, I'm sure we can have an argument a, a, about that. But I, I, my genuine, my general view, uh, as a kind of my global Whig view of history, David, is that. Um, the history of the 20th century and the 21st century has been one of submerged and subaltern peoples that are now beginning to take full possession of their future. And I hope that Wales will join them one day, though I don't, I don't discount the very uh, real practical difficulties, of, uh, you know, not least because of our own impoverishment, that are in uh, the way of, of that. But that's where I, I'd like to go. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it inherently, politics, identity, it's a very subjective thing. But let's ask this question about uh, what is Britain for? You know, uh, when I was born, my father worked for the National Coal Board. There were uh, British, UK-wide institutions, you know, British Steel, British Rail. Um, what happened? Labour and Conservative governments actually led to the demise of those UK-wide institutions. 1945 maybe was a vision of an alternative Britain that could have been, but it was snuffed out of existence. And that's why uh, I and my family we pitched our tent in a different political field. Thank you, Robert.